So I'm Kyle Cusick, 37 years old from Fall River, Massachusetts, born and raised, um, trained out of the Fall River PAL, had seven professional fights in the last two and a half years or so, and going for my, uh, going for my eighth in a couple of weeks. September 16th, a little under three weeks away at the Fall River PAL on 31 Franklin Street, Fall River, Massachusetts, which just happens to be my home gym. I train upstairs on the top floor. The fights are held down on the first floor. That's where the Southern New England Golden Gloves have been held for roughly 30, 40 years. So it's a pretty hallowed boxing spot in our region. And my opponent is Johnny Kim. So Johnny's been in the combat game probably as long as I have. He's a few years younger than me, but he's got over 20 years of experience between Muay Thai, kickboxing. He doesn't have as much boxing experience. This will be his third professional boxing fight, but um, he comes to fight. You know, one thing everybody says about Johnny is that he's got a gas tank. I respect any man that gets in there, but um, you know, I've put in so many hours away from my family, so much work. Uh, blood, sweat, tears, so, you know, I'm not stopping throwing punches until a ref rips me off him or he stays down for that 10 count. So yeah, we're driving through the Highlands on Highland Ave. This is uh, where I grew up through high school. Dude, I've lived, lived in the south end of the city, the north end of the city. I mean, I don't know, I feel like Fall River gets a bad knock, but it's a blue collar city, hard working people. It's what you make of it, man. the D where they wild and we got them vibing up in the highlands. They come alive when busy me bringing the energy. Link up to think of these symphonies. They from the city. You shouldn't pretend to be making my memory. You ain't no kidding me. I'm in the zone for real. Competition, they be gone for real. It's pitiful. Speak of the throne, man. Leave it alone. And anyone aiming to claim it is cynical. Ain't no subliminal, man. If you wonder it, don't even ask me. Don't even ask. I've been making noise since the Dover boys had it locked down at Pulaski. So we're at Love's Boxing today, coming up for sparring. Uh, probably get like six to eight rounds, get some different looks, and uh, keep sharpening up. What's going through your mind right now? Just as, uh, as you prepare, you're getting ready to do some hard rounds. Just you know, you always—I don't know, man—I always get those butterflies, even on sparring days. You know what I'm saying? It's a fight. Boxing sparring is always hard. Um, you know, my boy Tyler, I spar with here, always puts it on me. No, I'm not nervous. I'm excited, but you know, ready to get after it, ready to get in and get it done. And like, how hard is this far going to be re relative to the fight? You trying to replicate the fight? Or? Yeah, it'll be it'll be fight based. You know what I'm saying? Like, unless someone gets hurt, no one's trying to hurt each other. But we're gonna be going at each other like it's a fight. Gotcha. So we took that first fight against a real tough kid, uh, Joshua Raineri, that had been knocking everybody out. Really tough to match for the promoter. It was a close decision for Josh, but I thought, you know, I made a good account of myself. Um, a month later, I fought on Thanksgiving Eve, right after getting over COVID against um, Jay Gregory from New York. So, uh, the first round, we were winning. I got caught with a bad uppercut, went down, got off the canvas, and then. We just dominated them the last three rounds. In a four round fight, it's real tough to win if you go down once and get a 10-8 round, but we won that fight. He asked for a rematch, ran it back um, up in New Hampshire at a closed circuit show. We went four rounds, I won a unanimous decision. After that, we fought Paulo D'Souza, uh, more of an MMA veteran, but you know, a, a close to a dozen pro fights, so way more experienced than me. Um, had a great training camp at the PAL. 
We stopped him in the third round. My, that, that was, you know, my first stoppage as a professional. It felt great. I mean, I felt like I was, you know, on top of the world. So after that fight, um, Peter started telling me, hey, like, we might be able to step it up. I might be able to get you on a bigger stage. And he said, you know, hey, um, you know, I've talked to top rank. And at that point, they were just getting uh, Nico Ali Walsh going that they were promoting, which is the grandson of Muhammad Ali. And uh, for me, I felt like that was a perfect opportunity. For me. They approached Peter and said, get this guy one more win and we'll make it happen. They actually sent the contract uh, to Peter. They're like, get him to four and one, sign this contract. And I was gonna, I was gonna face Nico Ali Walsh at Madison Square Garden on a Vasily Lomachenko undercard. I believe it was the December 18th. So it was a quick turnaround, right? Maybe four weeks because um, that fight where I was looking to go four and one against Eddie Gates was uh, Thanksgiving Eve. Going into that fight, again, felt confident. Eddie was another guy who's only faced iron. You know, everybody he fought was a prospect. We go in there, first round, really bad clash of heads. And by the second round, my eye was swollen shut. But in the fourth round, we put him down, scored me a 10-8 round in that fourth round, and we won the fight. But um, being that, that turnaround fight, that Madison Square Garden was such a short turnaround and the shape that my eye was in, I, I wasn't gonna be able to be cleared to, to compete. We're 11 days out, Fall River PAL at home. About to go up there and work out in this 95 degree heat. Do uh, bag work, mitt work, footwork drills. Get off these last couple pounds and uh, get after it. How many years you been coming up these stairs? 21, more than I'd like to admit. Yeah, I think the first time I came in here, I was 16. Now I'm 37, same stairs, same gym. Some of the best fighters out of New England came out of here. Jay Pires, uh, Super Ray Oliveira, Scott Pemberton. Lots of guys, man. More than, more than I probably know about, to be honest. I've literally been doing it for like 50 years. Tell me a little bit about your relationship with Libby Medeiros. He's just, he's always, he's always met me in the middle and, and, and been there for me. He's always given me great advice. He's never steered me wrong. You know, he's hard on me when I need, he needs to be hard on me. He'll lay off at the right time when he knows I might be down on myself. And um, he's taught me everything I know about boxing. He's taught me way more about life and how to be, you know, a, a stand up man who handles the business. And, um, you know, I wouldn't be doing this if Libby still wasn't here doing it with me. And if it wasn't for Al, the PAL wouldn't be there because um, at this point, you know, Libby's, Libby's health issues precluded him from, from walking up those five sets of stairs and opening the gym. So we came up with a, I think what I, they came up with, with a great system, which was, you know, we're fortunate enough with modern technology to get Libby, Libby on FaceTime. Libby, Libby's watchful eye is over us, shouting out instructions from the camera and Al has become an extension of Libby as um, Libby coaches Al up in every, you know, in, with, with, with his boxing coaching, with hand, wrapping hands. And um, I, for me, it's been, it, it's been a perfect marriage. You know, um, I've got really tight with Al. When we go up to New Hampshire, I'm lucky enough um, that Libby, Libby can make the trip up. His son, Kenny Medeiros, who was a well-decorated amateur champion, corners me along with Libby and Al and um, I think it's, it's it's the best team I could ask for they, they, they get. just finished uh, second workout of the day bag drills and then miss with Al we're gonna shoot out a couple minutes early and uh, head over to the Fall River, Fall River Experiment podcast see my boys Johnny Lopes and Dave Pelletier try to push these tickets and uh, this is my city, ain't no way I'm backing down. I run the underground, just starting to surface now. Where the competition at? All I see is fucking clowns. I rep that 508, gotta love that local sound. Never had a 9 to 5, still managed to hold it down. Had to sit connect since my feet touched the ground. Troy City, homie, ain't nobody do it better. The kids clever, sit back and count the cheddar. This is my hood, you know where the boy be. I'm getting faded, smoking blunts on the side streets. I posted on a porch with a brew on Bank Street. Cause I'm the king of the river, you're just a casualty Think logically, you're really not seeing me I got this, do you really got the balls to beat? Me and murder mass, choice cities, mean streets So be quiet, So, what's your... 
prediction. So honestly, uh, as far as like my professional career, man, like my back's against the wall. I, I'm, I'm coming off two decision losses. Um, the last one super close. Argue, you know, I felt like we did enough to, to, to earn the decision, but we didn't get it. And this is it, you know, if, if, if I lose this fight, I'm a 500 fighter. And um, I, I honestly feel like I'm better than that. So th this is make or break. So my plan is just to go out there, use every ounce of, of skill and endurance that my coaching and my, my team has helped me build up through this eight, 10 week camp and, and leave every ounce in that ring. Um, my opponent's a super tough guy. He, by no means is he gonna lay down. But um, I feel like I've got the tools and we've done the, the hard work to go out there and earn a stoppage in some fashion, whether that's a ref stepping in or whether we can um, put enough pressure on him to, to feel like finding the exit sign is better than, than toughing it out anymore. And that's what, that's what we're going for. But there's no, no world, no scenario where I'm walking out of that, that gym, my gym, that night without my hand.